Oh, hello. The purpose of the following informational video is to introduce you to the process of building a sealed constructed Magic the Gathering deck. Sealed is the format most commonly found at pre-release and launch events, two events that this channel officially endorses as being worth it. Before we begin, I'd like to stress that this video emphasizes the process and not the product. It is meant as a starting point. I will guide you through the steps that you should be taking, and I will tell you the questions that you should be asking, even though I don't necessarily have the definitive answers to those questions. After all, if I could build a perfect limited deck with consistency, I'd quit my job and start playing on the Pro Tour. <laughs> Building a sealed deck can be an exciting process, but it can also feel daunting or even overwhelming for a player new to the format. Even experienced Magic players sometimes don't know the basic process used when building a sealed deck. This video will guide you through that process and hopefully help you at future pre-release, launch, and other sealed events. Please note, many players have their own system or style when building sealed decks. This is not meant as absolute rules, far from it, but rather a clear outline of the basic process for building sealed. Even if you do not agree with this process, or you have other clever or creative ways to go about that process, it is always beneficial to know the core foundation of something. I like to think of it as saying that you might be a chef who plans to make a unique and wonderful dish, but even though you are about to cook something of great complexity, you still need to know the basics, like how to simmer butter without burning it. The process I'm about to take you through is for building a sealed deck. If you are not familiar with what a sealed deck is, then please take a moment and view my short video defining and explaining the format. Alright, so let's say you are at your pre-release or launch event. You have just been handed six booster packs and told that you may begin building your deck. Where do you begin? Step 1. Sort by color. I suggest doing this as you open your packs. Step 2. Remove dirt. What is dirt? Dirt means the cards you will never play. Too expensive, too pointless, too weak. You are not going to play these cards. Get them out of your vision so that you can focus on what matters. Step 3. Arrange your cards in logical order. What is logical order? Logical order simply means best first, second best second, and so on. How do you know what cards are better than others? Well, the ability to evaluate whether a card is unplayable, poor, good, great, or all around excellent is what I was referring to in the prologue when I said there are no easy answers to these questions. Every set is different learning to evaluate card value is a lifelong process. It is only through constant study and conversation with others that we improve and refine this skill. However, there are some basic rules that are universal. The first is the bread method. While much more relevant in draft, the bread method is still very helpful and sealed to guide you in how to place your cards in logical order. BREAD is an acronym that means bombs, removal, evasion, abilities, and dirt. We've already mentioned that dirt are the cards that are more or less unplayable. Hopefully you've already removed these cards from your color piles. Bombs are your biggest threats. They are the cards where, if your opponent cannot get rid of them fast, they will go off and win you the game. 
Removal is your way of dealing with your opponent's threats. Removal can be counter spells, spells that destroy or exile other cards, etc. Removal removes the threat. Evasion refers to attackers who have some way of preventing or trying to prevent your opponents from blocking. This means flying creatures, creatures with intimidate, trample, abilities like that. Abilities means any remaining cards that don't win you the game, but help you win the game. A is often also referred to simply as aggro, meaning whatever remaining creatures you may have that don't have evasion. Whatever remaining aggro forces you have, go after those without evasion. And then, as we've already covered, dirt. It really helps to remove dirt first so that you can more clearly see and evaluate your playables. But let's boil all of this down to a simple rule. You want threats, and you want answers to your opponent's threats. This is what the bread order is trying to show you by placing B and R as your top two priorities. Despite this, many people overlook the extreme need for answers. Your opponents have bombs. Always remember this. They have multiple bombs in their deck. If they cast their bomb, you need an answer or you will lose. This is why answers are so critical, and yet they continue to be overlooked by many players. This is why color evaluation is so important. Your second, and in some cases third color, fills in the weaknesses of your first color. For example, if your first color has no flyers, your second should have at least two, if possible. Which brings us to step four choose and combine your colors. How do you choose which colors to combine to make your deck? In evaluating which colors to combine, you're going to look at two things, mana curve and creature count. Examine your mana curve. If your deck is filled with too many cards that cost too much mana, then you're going to play a lot of games where you have nothing to do early on. Players who do so end up sitting through a game with a bunch of cards in their hand that they never end up being able to cast because they are simply too expensive. You need two drops, one drops if possible, and more than anything you need solid three and four drops. Examining a mana curve helps you determine which colors to play and which to combine because if you are interested in a color that has no two drops and you have another color that has several, then you're likely going to want to combine the two. Line up your cards in order of casting cost. Anything above seven? If so, you want to get rid of it. You do not want to run more than one one or two cards above five and six. Cards costing three and four mana will be the meat of your deck. On average, you'll have about seven to ten of these. Cards costing one and two will be fewer, but they are also critical to your deck. And on average, you'll have five to seven. Again, these are only averages and every set is different. Evaluate your cards. Do you have enough creatures at two, three, and four drops? A deck with only one three drop and one four drop, or a deck with only two creatures that cost less than four is likely going to perform poorly. Creature count. 13 creatures should be the absolute minimum. 15 to 16 creatures is ideal. Your goal after combining colors is to have 22 to 23 playable cards, typically in two colors. Obviously, the set you are playing will influence this. A set that emphasizes, say, monocolored decks might be placing you in only one color. A set that emphasizes sizes three color decks might be placing you in three, etc. But overall you want 17 land and 23 non-land cards, or 18 land and 22 non-land cards. I typically prefer the latter, especially in multicolored decks. Final thoughts. Don't build more than a 40 card deck. You'll sometimes be tempted to go to 41 cards, but don't. You want consistency. The idea is that your deck can do what you built it to do each time you sit down to play, not just sometimes. Do not build a second deck out of your sideboard cards with the intent of switching decks between the second or third game of a match. Here is an outline that you can use as a study guide. I hope this video has been of some help to you. You can help me keep making videos just by clicking the subscribe button.
by sharing this video with your friends, or even just by leaving a comment. And remember, you will never, ever be able to play in a sealed event like pre-release or launch at Target or Walmart. So whenever buying cards or accessories, always try and spend that money at your local game store whenever possible. You are supporting your magic community.